Okay, my clock says eight o'clock Eastern time. So I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we'll just let a couple more people pop on here as we as we go. But welcome to Stepping Stones to AAC. Let's get social. Tonight we're going to be talking about social interactions and conversation. And my name is Brittany Tony. So welcome, welcome to our Stepping Stones to AAC classroom. This is now a link that we have, we can share at the end of the presentation. Um, Donna, mine does not look like that. Are you talking so about your control panel? If you're using the web, if you logged in through your web browser, it does look a little bit different. You should still have access yes. to the different tabs. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. It, also, if you're on a Mac, sometimes the control panel looks a little different as well. So, so this is our Stepping Stones classroom. My name again is Brittany Tony. I am a speech language pathologist. I am the Bitmoji on the right, sitting down with the short hair, pixie cut. I cover Saltillo products for Southwestern Ohio, Indiana, and Northern Kentucky. So if you're in any of those areas, I would be your consultant. And I have Heather Prenevo with me and I'll let her introduce herself and talk a little bit more about the classroom. Welcome everyone, I'm Heather Prenevo. I am the Bitmoji on the left. Um, I am a speech language pathologist and AT consultant for Saltillo in the states of Minnesota and Wisconsin. So welcome if you're joining from there. And just a little bit of information about our Bitmoji classroom and we'll share our interactive link with you shortly is that our idea was we wanted to create um, a space to start collecting some daily routines and activities that we can model core words. So on the bookshelf are icons that represent different activities or different routines. And with our interactive one, you are able to click on those and it'll take you to our recorded webinar um, that we've done on those different topics. And if there's not a spot to click on, that means it's coming. So we have filled up our bookcase, which yay, that's kind of exciting. Um, and so you can kind of preview some ideas of what you might see come after the holidays in January. Other things that are interactive on there are um, the poster on the wall will take you to our low tech board where you can print off more. Um, the Go core word will take you to um, some resources on our chat corner around teaching core vocabulary. And yeah, just lots of fun interactive things on there. Welcome. Haven't had a graduate student on here yet. So very exciting. Yes. Glad to have you. <laughs> yes. Hope you learned some things that you can take to your practice someday. Okay, so let's begin our AAC journey. AAC is a journey and it really takes all of you who just answered who you are to go on this journey with our AAC kiddos. So it takes the SLP and the parent and the teacher and the AAC specialist and us as consultants, right? All of us together are going on this journey. So we hope that you learned something today on this journey as we talk about social interactions. So what are we going to do today? And I will let Heather explain this. Sounds good. So as one of the materials that you have um, downloaded, there is an organizational tool and that's what you see on the screen here. And this we will fill out together tonight. You can also keep a blank copy for, to use later. And so the idea is to pick an activity. And so tonight it's getting social. And then we will go through these three steps to choose core words that we can target, uh, plan out questions and comments for ourselves, and talk about how we can model it and expand language. 
The second handout in the materials tab is called our reference tool. And this is kind of our reminder sheet. So after we go through this and you take it back to you, your home, your practice, and you're like, oh, what were we doing with each of these steps? This is just a quick description. Or if you wanna share it with um, other parents or other staff that you work with, kind of goes through step-by-step step how to pick up the words, um, how to plan questions and comments, locating them on the device. So we'll go through all of these steps together tonight. Okay, so let's start with a conversation. And I realize I chose this icon of the telephone and then I'm not going to be on the telephone in the video, but it's just one more way that we can have a conversation. So we have conversations all the time and that's really why we chose this topic for this evening. So we have conversations in person, as I mentioned over the phone, these days our conversations might be on FaceTime or Skype or Zoom or whatever platform you're using virtually to connect with others. So social language is important to teach our AAC users. And I feel that sometimes we forget that. It's, social language is so important. We don't just want to teach them to request wants and needs, but we also want them to be social. And also we chose this topic because the holidays are coming up and holidays are a great time to practice having a conversation with family even if this year you're celebrating from afar. So maybe you plan to do a Zoom Thanksgiving dinner with your family. This would be a good way to practice with your AAC user or practice beforehand, maybe in therapy to help them become a little bit more social during those holiday gatherings or Zoom gatherings, I guess. <laughs> The third handout that we have for you tonight is a low-tech um, core word board, and it's based off of our Word Power 60 basic file with a few added question words and social phrases, which is kind of nice for tonight. And so you, if you were able to print that off before the session tonight, uh, you can practice along with us um, when we get to the practice section. Okay. So I will be showing you a video of, and really this was hard for me to film because I, I can't film an AAC user doing this with me. I wish I could, um, but given the circumstances, I you will just see me with, with a plate. There's really not much interaction until the next video when I'm modeling on the actual, um, I, I used a flip book. So, you will also hear my husband who so kindly joined <laughs> in with me to help have that conversation and make it feel a little bit more real. So if you, again, as Heather said, if you want to follow along and see, I use a lot of core words. Let's see if you can figure out what some of them are. Here we are to have Thanksgiving dinner with our family. Look, you have peas and turkey and some pie. Yum. Oh, look, here comes Uncle Nathan. Hello, Ryan. It is great to see you. How have you been? What can you say? Good job. What can you ask? I am well, thank you. I watched a great movie last night. Hmm, I wonder what movie do you watch? Trolls World Tour. Hmm, I haven't seen that one yet. It was really good. How was your cherry pie? Oh, what can you say? Don't you like it? Yes. How about the peas? Oh, hmm. Uh, me either. Good talking to you. Good job. Bye. Okay. So, all right. Sorry, I'm flipping to the next screen. Okay. So, um, and I realized that, again, this was very hard to kind of coordinate with a social interaction, not having someone to kind of answer the questions, but if you were to choose some core words based on what I was prompting um, my made up client to, or child to say, 
what are some core words that maybe based on what we were, how the interaction was going, um, what core words could you choose? And you can type them in the chat window. Words you've heard her using a lot. Awesome. I look and. Mm -hmm. But if you're still at the point where you're not quite sure about what core words, um, using the homepage on the device or using the core, the low tech board is always great. Like and you, perfect. Mm -hmm. I see and like, yep. Mm -hmm. These are all great. What about any questions that the gentleman was asking? How? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, good job, guys. That's, I mean, again, you could use whatever. There's actually one that I chose that I was more prompting of the client, which, again, it becomes more evident when I'm modeling. But um, yes, great job. Yeah, I use, you could use a million words for this. And in regular planning, you'd probably be thinking this before actually doing and watching a video or that sort of thing. So you'd be planning words ahead. But the idea around this is get some words in your head that we can target. Yeah. So next we're going to go through open-ended questions and open-ended questions encourage communication. An open-ended question, if you are unfamiliar, is a question that cannot be answered with just a yes or no response. So we're going to practice writing some open-ended questions together for each of our target core words. And I'll show you the three that I chose um, so we can plan that out together. So which one, just as a little quiz, is an open-ended question? Do you like the pie or how is the pie? Yay. How is the pie? Yay. Unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we could say, if we just said, do you like pie, the AAC user could only say yes or no, right? Versus if we say, how is the pie or how is your pie, we could say good, bad, Gross, yucky, delicious. You know, I don't know if any sticky. pie would be. <laughs> yes, pecan pie is so sticky. I always okay, think of so, those being errorless too. Like there's so many options and they get to choose. And so we don't get to choose if they're right or wrong. Exactly. So these are the three words I chose. Again, I know that it wasn't clear in the video as much, but I chose you, which you guys got. How... And then I chose the word good because it's a good, it's a good, <laughs> it's a, it's a great word that we can comment, use to comment or respond when we're, when we're having social interactions. So now I want you guys to tell me or give me some ideas for open-ended questions for the word you. And it can be the you is in the question or the question would prompt them to use the word you. Exactly. So do you like it? It's a yes, no. You like? Exactly, Lisa, I like that one. What do you like? Yeah. Oh, what do you like? There we go. So even though we do this all the time, I still get stuck with some of those yes, no questions are the first things that pop into your head. How do you feel? I like that one. How are you feeling? Good. How are you, maybe? Mm -hmm. Or even how are you? Yeah. Yeah. Great. What about open-ended questions for the word how? We just name this. Oh, I like that. How does that taste? Mm. Good. It's a good way to. How are you feeling? We can use that one again. Or just say, how are you? We can reuse. <laughs> that uses how and you, right? We got to. Uh-huh. Right there. I was thinking of how much do you want? A lot, yeah. a little, big scoop, little scoop. How was it? Maybe because we were talking about that video. Okay. What about the word good? And this one's tricky because I didn't include it in the video until you get the modeling, some critical thinking here. What are some open ended questions that you could use? Um, we can reuse so the how are you feeling. Yep. 
Because then they could say good or bad or mm -hmm. sick or sad or that I don't get to see my family. How was the turkey? <laughs> yeah. You guys have any other thoughts on good questions? We could use how does it taste again? Mm -hmm. right yeah, a lot of these we can reuse. So that's another reason why I chose that one. So we're not, especially with social interactions, if it's new, it's good to like reuse some of these words. Okay. So good job, guys. Okay, okay I'm going to <laughs> I didn't tell Heather about this, so she's probably going to be surprised. But I, <laughs> I included a new kind of concept specifically for social interactions. So we're going to talk about possible comments, but I also wanted to talk about a baiting comment, which we haven't talked about before. So, um, so when we're thinking about comments, if your child is not yet responding to open-ended questions, you can model the comment. So, which you'll see me kind of doing in the next video. So we really wanna plan and write down one to two comments that you could model for your child. That they could say in response to your question or the family member's question, which was happening in the video. And we wanna make sure that we keep them at or just above their language level. So if they're only saying, currently most of the time a one word phrase maybe we'd only model two to three words if they're at the three word level maybe we model five or six words so and then a baiting comment so this is based off the work of michelle garcia winner i'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of her she does the social thinking curriculum this is one of my love it favorite social yes social thinking she's she's your guru there but one of the things that I think one of the concepts that she kind of highlights is baiting questions and comments. So in the first video, you heard the gentleman say, I saw a great movie last night. It almost baits that communication partner or the AAC user to then ask a question or make a comment about it. So that's what that is. So a baiting comment is a comment or question baits a communication partner in either asking a question or making a comment about what the speaker wants to talk about. So just like I said there, I saw a great movie last night. And then we can ask, oh, how was it? Or what was it? Or what did mm -hmm. you watch? So anyway, another idea, especially for social interactions that you can think about with comments. So um, I filled in this for questions, just some examples. But let's think about a comment that you could model for the word you. And it doesn't have to be an answer to these questions. It can be, you know, if later on in the conversation or. You get it, you ate it, good. Yeah. You give. Not that we'll be passing plates around as much this year. You draw, I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or maybe if we're modeling how are you, we could say like, you good. Mm -hmm. You liked it. Yeah. You want more? Good. Yeah. Great. Look at you guys, you're on a roll. Okay, how about how? Oh, my cursor just here. Oh, <laughs> sorry, it was like, ah, okay. Okay, so what about how? What? comments can we model and actually this one i didn't i couldn't think of any so if you guys do that's wonderful but how is a question so maybe in response to that question how are you yes perfect i good but using that word how we can't really use that word in a comment to model How was it? How was it? It good. Mm -hmm. It was good. It tastes good. I done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What about good? I full. Oh, I like it. 
What about the word done? What can we, or good, okay. sorry. <laughs> oh gosh, I think I'm done for the night. Um, <laughs> good, so what words or comments can we model? It, yummy, yeah, it's good. Yeah. I good, we can use that one again. Yep. Gross. Gross. <laughs> I love yeah. getting those fun commenting words. So if you have my amazing like word of power, go dig into some of those fun social comments oh, because yeah. it just makes communicating more fun. It, it does. My daughter's all over the gross, yucky, everything. <laughs> I try to make her to eat. So, okay. Um, okay. So now let's find the words and then we're going to look at the video. So if you have your board in front of you, let's just look for the words you, oh, that's good. I don't know which order I put them in, sorry. Good, and then you, and then how. So you can highlight, it's good to, if you have a low tech board, in addition to your clients or AAC users device, sometimes I like to just put a post-it note and cut the hole cut a hole in the middle and just put it around those words on my low tech board to remind myself these are the ones that I'm modeling today. So and then you'll see on the left, I have completed the form. So that step three, how will you model? I'm just taking everything that we talked about and just giving some options for one word models or two and three word models. So you'll see there's kind of a mix of questions and comments in there for those two and three word models. So that's all that is, just to give you that an example. section, I know people often ask, like, what's the difference between step two and step three? For me, step three is just preparing yourself for that, what have they give me? If they give me one word, how can I expand it to two or three? If they gave me two words, how can I expand it to three or four? And so having it ahead of time so you're not having to think on the fly is kind of the purpose behind it, that you've already thought ahead some of the things that you could model um, so that you don't have to stare at the board, try to think of something quick to say until it becomes more natural. Yep, exactly. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you this video of me modeling again. And I'm using a flip book again. I, I think I use this in the last video that mm -hmm. in the uh, transition, no, Halloween, Halloween I don't remember. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Halloween, so I, 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 we just get some requests to do low tech. And I think, especially if you're, if you are gathering in a small, you know, have a small gathering this holiday season, um, it's just, if you don't want to take the device with you, a flip book is a good option. So just wanted to show that as well. And all of our car words that we talked about are on this standard Word Power 60 basic flip book. So just keep that in mind. Um, but here is where we kind of put it all together. Here we are to have Thanksgiving dinner with our family. Look, you have peas and turkey. And pie, yum. Oh, look, here comes Uncle Nathan. Hello, Ryan. It is great to see you. How have you been? Good. Maybe you could say, how are you, Uncle Nathan? I am well, thank you. I watched a really great movie last night. Mm, I wonder what he watched. We could say, what you watch? It was Trolls World Tour. Hmm, we haven't seen that one yet. We could ask, how was it? it? How it? It was really good. How's your cherry pie? Do you like your cherry pie? Good, it is good. We could say, I like it. And then we could ask Uncle Nathan if he likes it. You like pie? Yes. How about the peas? Oh, what can you say? I know what you're going to say. We can tell him no good, no like. 
please. Me either. Good talking to you. Cool. Can you hear me? Good job. You can say bye bye. Okay. So, as you can see, that was just kind of pulling that all together and using some of those questions and comments. And that's how I would model for my AAC user, whether they're using a device or a low tech board or a flip book or whatever it is that they're using. So after trying the steps with the last few minutes we have, just wanted to know if you have any questions still, how you felt like the, the practice went with, you know, modeling while we're having the conversation and what are your next steps? So you don't have to answer all of these. If you have a thought or a question, we'd love to hear it. I'll give you time to type in there. And while you're thinking, I'm just gonna throw up our, our emails. Um, and phone numbers should you think of a question or you have a suggestion or whatever it is that might pop in your brain oh good question she wants to know what do you put all the pictures on the device on one screen or multiple screens so if you're if you mean like the different symbols and the different words um i go with what they have available um and if they allow you to model on their screen, that's great. Um, but like Brittany said, having that low tech option available and you can show them on the low tech how it would look on their device, um, that can be helpful too, so that they can kind of take ownership, I think. And I think that, Shirley, if you're asking about whether you would modify the device to have all three of those core words on the home page or on mm. one screen i would recommend if they are on a word power 42 basic for example some of those words aren't going to be on the home page so i know that for example good and how and even how in Word Power 60 Basic, you have to go to the questions to get to that. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend helping your client net or AAC user navigate to that screen. And I know that's a couple extra steps, especially with the questions, but it's good to learn that language and where those icons are. So helping them navigate to that and modeling that nav you navigating to that page to find those words that we talked about like good and how and what um, that that that's what I would recommend yeah. and that you could always model yeah again modeling that navigation if they don't allow you to model on the device you could always use something else and kind of along the same lines if they're not quite ready to do the two combinations so go to the questions page and then find it um, starting with you navigating to the page and talking about where you're going and then let them search and find the right word on that page um, and then slowly kind of scaffolding back or pulling back and letting them try to get there the next time yeah i hope that helped answer your question oh good <laughs> And we do have one more uh, stepping stones to AAC coming up in December before a little holiday break. So we'll be talking about winter fun and all the holidays. So hopefully you'll be able to join us. And then, like I said, we have a bunch of brand new ones coming after the first of the year. Yes, and thankfully for the winter one, Heather lives where it's really cold and hopefully there'll be <laughs> lots of snow there. So. That's what I'm hopeful for, at least, because we haven't had any yet oh, here. I'll share my snow. Yes, I'll share my snow in the video. <laughs> Maybe she, for those of you that live somewhere warmer, she could share her snow with all of us. <laughs> Dreaming of it. a wipe. There we go. <laughs>
All right. Thank you all for joining tonight and we hope to see you next time. Take care.